your five favorite relatives, the mothers. Disease, Roma 
business as well they should. But us regular folks that might wear a tennis shoe or an occasional python boot know this experience of little inconvenience by the name of Stan Clark. How true that is. You know, my python boot was too tight. Couldn't get it off last night. A week went by and now it's July. I finally got that sucker off and my girlfriend cry. You've got Stan Clark. slippers right over here to Dada. Fido, I asked you to bring me the slippers. Oh, Frank, I was so stoned I couldn't keep them in my mouth. Fido, look here, boy. I know you're supposed to be man's best friend, boy, but I asked you to bring me the slippers, and you didn't bring me the slippers, and do you know, boy, that makes you liable for punishment to the full extent of Australian law? Oh, really? Hurt me, hurt me, hurt me. It'll be my pleasure, Fido. Just step right into my office. Here 
I will remind you, this hair was of even length. Then, all of a sudden, God made two very big mistakes. The first one was called Man, and the second one was called Woo Man. Woo Man looketh upon the unmodified poodle and saith unto herself, Verily, under her breath, she saith, this dog could get me hot if it had a haircut. And so, the woo man turned to the man and addressed him by his real name. She saith unto him, chump of chumps, go out and get yourself a job. And the man, verily being chump of chumps, got up off his booty and walked out of the cave and went into the world and got a job. Whereupon he drew a paycheck and came back with his precious, miserable, disgusting little paycheck back to the place where the Wu Man waited. And the Wu Man took away the man's paycheck and with it proceeded to purchase F a pair of scissors. And then, after buying the scissors, she attacked the dog. Now that's a very stupid idea with that thing over there. Why don't you put that out so you don't injure somebody? Safety first. Yeah. It's almost like being at an Alice Cooper concert. saying the woo man got these scissors see and she looketh upon the poodle and she examineth the poodle and she clippeth upon the poodle in the thorax the medulla the toowoomba and the managua leaving some area here on the legs but cleaning off the feet so that the paws and the little claws would be more sanitary when exposed. And then she had the unmitigated audacity to put the aforementioned poodle into a quasi-erotic position thusly, and I will demonstrate. She got that sucker sitting right in front of her just like that. Had him like this. And then she stuck her legs up in the air, reaching heavenward in a gesture of supplication as it were, and saith these very words, which you might be allowed to cherish for the rest of your lives.
Councilor Tonight. I have been informed that there are some members of the City Council and members of Parliament or whatever have come down here tonight to witness this concert in order to determine the future of rock music in your city. Now, let me say this, because we've been in this situation before, and this is, this is addressed, quiet for a minute, this is serious. Bring the band on down behind me, boys. No, I don't want to... I don't want to waste your time with a lot of uh, quasi-political stuff, but think about this for a minute. The problem is not whether or not to stop music in your city, but whether or not to open up a place indoors where it's not going to bother the people around here, and the place that's going to have good enough acoustics and enough seating so that you can have good concerts. And I think that if the, if the people from the Parliament and the City Council are here, that they should think about that, rather than worrying about the fact that there are some people who live in this area and in other areas around outdoor concert facilities who will complain no matter what kind of music or what kind of an event is going on there. Those people were born to complain and they will always complain and you'll never make them happy. And if you let them rule your lives, you're going to be in trouble. So anyway, as far as you guys are concerned out there who are actually people who want to go to rock and roll concerts, I would suggest you don't forget about this, but if you have the right to vote, or if you have some way to apply pressure to the people who take care of your affairs here in this city, let them know that you want a place indoors that has good facilities for music, and maybe they ought to do it for you since that's their job if they're the government. And the name of this song is Filthy Habits. <laughs>
the tragic true story of one of the little known heroes of the 20th century in the United States of America. Yes, you guessed it, it's the true story of Michael Kenyon, professionally known as the Illinois Enema, Enema Bandit. This is his story. Bring the band on down behind me, boys. For the past 10 years in the Midwestern part of the U.S., out near Chicago, this guy, Michael Kenyon, a lonely, desperate sort of a man, has been ravaging the college-educated woman, women, woo men, in that area. What he did was, until I caught him, he went out at night with a ski mask on, carrying a briefcase. In the briefcase was a pistol, some rope, a thermometer, and an anima bag. He would break into the home of a college-educated woman and, at gunpoint, force her to submit to a cosmically oriented internal rinse job. <laughs> the process went something like this. College-educated women can at times be forgetful of little things like locking the back door. And he'd always be able to spot the ones that were just on the fringe, you know what I mean? Michael would sneak up in through the back door, pull out his gun, tell the girl to lie down. Then he would have her naked and everything, and he would tie her up. Then he would remove the thermometer from his briefcase. And this is all true, by the way. He would take the thermometer out of the briefcase and... Back in the briefcase. And then, when he had gained all the information that he needed to know about internal conditions, Michael, old Michael, would dash into the toilet with the enema bag and fill that sucker up with hot water. Then he would dash back into the main room and whoop, 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 click, gurgle, 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 Then he would give himself a whack and tell the girl not to call the police for at least five minutes, pull it out, and dash back into the yard. Well, well, he already did. Then, later that night, Michael Kenyon was arrested in Champaign, Illinois, in earlier in uh, 1975. He was tried. Get that one. <laughs> he was tried and convicted in December of 1975, and is now serving about 20 years on five counts of armed robbery because apparently there is no law against giving a college-educated woman a rinse job. However, because Michael got a little too ambitious, he was robbing the ugly ones, and that's what put him away. So, my advice to you here in this particular isolated part of the world is start your own trend tonight. And this is our, come on, play the bass boy. <laughs> Let's boogie, Roy. I mean, Michael. <laughs>
police will say you're under arrest and the judge will have him for a special guest. The DA will order a secret test and stuff his pudgy little thumbs in the side of his vest. Then they'll put out a call you for the jury folks, that's you. And the judge will say, no poo poo jokes. They'll drag in the bandit for all to see, saying, don't nobody, no, no, have no sympathy. Hot soapy water in the first degree. And the bandit might say, It must be just what they all need. Cushy, cushy. It must be just what they all need. Help me, Doris. It must be just what they all need. And now direct from Burma. This is all my fashion song. You can't judge this because you're dumb. cheap, low-grade fantasy here tonight. Let's pretend that it was going to be a really big rock and roll show out of doors with nature and everything. Now, what do you need for one of these kind of shows in order to make it one complete thrilling extravaganza? The answer to the aforementioned question is simply this. You need audience participation. Now, we have come up with something that is so simple-minded, it represents literally the lowest ebb of audience participation. This is the most primitive form of audience participation. The only thing that is more primitive than this is sitting still. And I'm speaking of the motion of simply raising your hand and sticking your thumb up in the air and just going like that. Now, I don't know whether this is too much to grasp all at once, but try it like this. The hand comes up and then stick up the thumb. See, it doesn't hurt at all. Some of you are actually trying it because you think, well, maybe, I don't know. No, well, no, I'm too shy. No, I'm too evolved. It's against my religion. One thing or another, you're a member of parliament. You don't want to show us your thumb. You don't have a thumb. There are a number of reasons why people like you should not show your thumb to people like us. We don't care. We're going to go on with the rest of the song. But if you want to have a good time, just stick your thumb up in the air and let the wind see get on it. Show it. Oh, let me see you. Let me see you. Let me see you.
prisoners grumble and piss their coals. They scratch their padded hair. A tiny light from a window hole a hundred yards away.
since at first it was created. But a dungeon like a sin <laughs> requires not but locking in. Of everything that's ever been, look at her. Look at him. That's what's the deal with dealing in. That's what's the deal with dealing in. That's what's the deal with dealing in. That's what's the deal with dealing in.
just called me a bum, but I knew right away she was really gonna come. So I got down to it. I whipped off a woman and slipped my thumb in the flat rotation to a sugar plum. I poked and stroked till my wrist got numb, and I still didn't hear no dynamo, huh? No dynamo, huh? Look 
Little animal, little animal again, little animal. 